couldn't believe this. Well, I could because the left is completely regressive these days. And in fact, they're so anti-racist that they're introducing segregation. <laughs> uh, segregated graduations are being celebrated. Here's one recent example from the University of California, Berkeley. Uh, Aramis Anderson said the last shall be first and the first shall be last. Receiving a Bachelor of Arts in Disciplinary Studies field, Political Economy, Legal Studies, and African American Studies. He said, disbursement and allocation, reparations for African Americans. I thought we frowned upon this sort of institutional racism, um, Gad. This is just bizarre. Well, it and, you know, I mean, think about it. It's it's the perfect manifestation of a slippery slope. Why do black people get their own? What about Lebanese Jewish people? What about my wife who's Lebanese mm. Armenian? She wants her own thing. What about Lebanese Christian people? They want it. I mean, education is precisely the laudable endeavor because, as I said earlier, it frees us from the shackles of our personal identities. I can love and appreciate Shakespeare whether I'm transgender person of color, an atheist or atheist or a Muslim. That's what makes education beautiful. So to now go back to an era of segregation under the cloak of progressivism is truly grotesque. It's unbelievable. And this is why I get up, Rita, every day to fight against this nonsense, because we have to return to the edifices of reason. The ABC, the employees have staged a walkout following the resignation of Stan Grant. Here's what they got up to during their break. I stand with Stan. I stand with Stan. We reject racism. 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 There was all sorts of different reactions to that. Will Kingston tweeted a symbolic gesture that also just happens to give everyone the afternoon off is such an ABC solution to a problem. But to me, there, there are so many questions that arise out of this. Uh, is the far left ABC institutionally racist, Kosher? It's really funny because they're facing this paradox where they either have to accept that, mm -hmm. uh, and in some ways I guess they have, because the leadership has apologized to Stan Grant, or they have to push back on it and say no, and then they're in a conundrum because one of their star presenters is you know, kicking up a fuss with it. Uh, it's, it's really interesting. One thing that he said in his statement before leaving, he said the media has become the poison that runs through the bloodstream of society. Mm. I think many would agree. I agree with, with him on that. On, but not for, on the the reasons, not for the reasons he <laughs> thinks. Um, and I also thought it was interesting that the leadership came out and uh, also, as usual, threw shade this way at News Corp and the Murdochs. Easy oh, to always do that. Mm. That they're threatening this because uh, the ABC threatens their, meaning this network's, business model. And the irony of that is not lost on anyone either because there is no business model for the ABC. By definition, it's not a business. It's a taxpayer-funded public good. That's what mm -hmm. it's supposed to be. Uh, and so, of course, the private sector, it's difficult to compete against something that can put stuff out without having earnings calls or shareholders or mm. anything else. So I thought that was interesting as well. Now, last week, we had Hollywood actress Charlize Theron threatening to F up anybody who doesn't like drag queen story time. This week, we have alleged comedian Leslie Jones threatening violence for those who object to drag queens entertaining children. Just another lefty losing it. So the next time you want to show up to bother a queen at story time, at a show, at the bottomless brunch, or even just on the street living their damn lives, you better check yourself, Tanya, and don't think about what Jesus would do. Think about what Leslie gonna do, because I'm watching you. Drag isn't dangerous, but Leslie Jones is. Oh, that's interesting. So if you protest men wearing dresses and reading to kids in libraries, uh, Leslie Jones might come around and assault you. That's nice, Kosher. This is... Uh, it's going to win, win hearts and minds. <laughs> I don't think they're trying to win hearts and minds, and that is the thing. It's, uh, it's an agenda, and it's becoming mainstreamed. There were a couple bits in her, I'll give her this, in her little monologue there that were funny. At least she had that. Charlie's there and didn't yeah, even have that no. um, in it. But, you know, more, more of the same. And they're conflating... They're, they're sort of the veneer is, oh, it's this really innocent thing. We're just innocent, law-abiding, sweet people are reading sweet stories to sweet children. Uh, and they're, it sort of obfuscates the shades of what's happening here. I think the issue is 
sexualized content, whether it's from drags, from straight people, from gay people, from whoever, we don't want sexualized content in yes. Story Hour. That is the issue. And the other issue is these issues are controversial and political, and it is not the job of teachers or librarians or other people who interact with our kids to activate our children. That is a parent's job, and that's that's what this is about. Absolutely. No one's against drag queens. No one's turning up to nightclubs where drag queens are performing for adults and going, don't do that. Mm -hmm. This became an issue when it became uh, imperative somehow to expose toddlers to this content. Now, this is sure to enrage lovers of beauty and sanity everywhere. Crazed climate change activists in Rome have poured black dye into the Trevi Fountain. These acts of vandalism can potentially damage the white stone. Let's have a look. I mean, well, there needs to be persecution. I can just imagine the Italian Prime Minister Maloney seeing that and mm -hmm. uh, picking up the phone and demanding action. That is absolutely reprehensible. But they keep attacking beauty, whether it's works of art, whether it's uh, the Trevi Fountain now. It seems like they're allergic to beauty. Why have they taken this particular strategy mm -hmm. in their protesting? That's a very astute point, because it is, as you say, it was a paint on an Andy Warhol. It was cake smeared on the Mona Lisa. Now this. Uh, I think some of it is just they're provocateurs, and they know that this is going to get them media attention for their alleged cause. Uh, I do think there's something to the point you raised, though, Rita, that it is also about attacking beauty. And who knows, I'm not a psychologist, mm -hmm. but there could be something going on there about why there's sort of uh, a, a desire to disrupt and to tear things down. Um, and then I think the other third point is this fall down of law and order in society as a system, as a value that's supported. Uh, and that's why this, this happens. It's brazen. It was in the middle of the afternoon, and they're doing it because there are no consequences. Either laws on the books are ignored or they're you know, watered down and not prosecuted in any meaningful way. And we're just going to see more and more of this behavior until there are consequences for it. Here's a student who is writing a project about transgender athletes competing in women's sport. But she's not allowed to use the term biological women. She got a zero for a project proposal because she used that term. I got a zero on a project proposal in my class because I used the term biological women, which is apparently not allowed anymore. She even said it was a good project proposal, um, but I got a zero because I use this term and it's exclusionary and not allowed anymore, so. And I 100% know that this is like the most biased grade ever because my project is about transgenders competing in biological women's sports. How am I supposed to do my final project if I can't use the word biological women, but that's what my project is about? That's a perfectly good question. How can you possibly complete that assignment without using the term biological woman? The entire point of the project is transgenders competing in biological women's sport, and yet she can't use that term? facts don't matter <laughs> in this new world order that we're in. And, you know, we just talked a moment ago about the lack of consequences mm. in society with respect to the vandalism. The university system is sort of a, a contained ecosystem where there are consequences and the, the professors and the administrators are judge, jury and executioner. Mm. And there's very little recourse that a student has. You know, they have the power to grade you however they want to even suspend and ex expel people for whatever they deem uh, to be a violation of the, the code of conduct mm -hmm. of the university. So now language is apparently part of the code of conduct. Uh, she has some recourse. She can broadcast it on social media, as she did. You know, maybe there's something outside the university system. But that is a problem for students going through it. And uh, there's very little that they can do as this onslaught keeps hammering down on them. It's just hard to believe you study for years, your parents save up so you can go to university and be confronted with that or you go into massive debt so you can... Uh, it really is incredible.